conversation with PJ during the bye week, considering the, the struggles to start the season? And how do you think he's really turned it around here? Second? Yeah, I mean, he showed a lot of belief in me. Uh, we talk about doing it better, and the belief he showed in me and the belief my teammates showed in me allowed me to, I guess, not take my game to the next level, but to bring it back to where I was. Um, they really helped me. You know, Mark Crawford, him and I talk a lot. Coach Ligg and I talk a lot just about the struggles. But we bounced back, and, yeah, Coach Fleck and I, he just kept mentioning belief, belief, belief. He can't have more belief in me than I do in myself, and I think when he told me that, that, that really switched. Yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome. It's a great team win. You know, Ja got that nice stop on, on fourth down or on third down, whatever it was. But it's great to come in the Champagne and get a, get a victory. I remember this is my first collegiate game I played here in 2020. This was the first place where I played. So it's awesome to come here and get a dub. You know, shout out the offense, shout out the defense, shout out the PAT field goal protection, shout out everybody. It was a, it was a great team win. Yeah, I mean, as you guys see, like all my misses have been to the right. So it's just working on that foot placement and keeping my hips downfield, keeping my eyes down. And that's something Coach Ligg and I have been talking a lot about. You know, he has a lot of knowledge when it comes to kicking. He's been doing it for a long time. So just something that him and I have repped. Him and I have watched a lot of film, gotten better, watched older guys, watched guys he's worked with, and it's, I think it's really helped me. There was a false start penalty right before your kick. Yeah. Uh, what, what goes through your mind when that happened? Uh, honestly, nothing. I was just telling myself, just my trigger word, eyes down, just telling myself, eyes down, keep my hips down or straight down the field. And I had trust in Alan Suckup. I had Sukup, sorry, I don't know how to say it. Trust in Mark Crawford. And I mean, the rest is history. Any more for Dragon? All right, cool. Thank you, Dragon. Shout out to Taco Bell. Thank you. Guys, the, the day that you had from the first quarter and then leading them all the way to those fourth quarter drives. Yeah, I think, I think the, the win, the game was, was absolutely, it was a gritty, it was a gritty game. I think the, the defense, especially you know Illinois defense, um, you know they're they're a gritty defense. They're at the right spot in, in most of the times, and um, for us it was just a, a matter of just taking what we got the whole way through and, and just sticking to it. Um, I thought the guys um, did an outstanding job just sticking to the game plan, um, figuring out new things we can do to, to move the ball down the field. And uh, shout out Quinn Carroll for his leadership today it was absolutely um, it, it was it was amazing. I I, I can't uh, you know thank him enough for what he's done for this team um, and his leadership really showed today. Um, I thought we did a good job balancing off each other today on the offense. What did you feel like the line I were doing to kind of take you out of your game? How yeah. Did you feel like you just didn't have to adjust? Yeah, they, you know, they, they did a good job of defense. The number one thing is uh, uh, they challenged the quarterback to see if they can post snap. Um, and we knew that going into the game. And, um, you know, I think for the most part, it was a matter of just challenging myself to, to put the ball in the right spot um, throughout, the, throughout the game. And uh, that was difficult to do. It's always really difficult to do it against a, a really good defense in the Big Ten. And, um, Illinois did a good job uh, of you know making me try to move my eyes around more than I should, or uh, making me you know move in the pocket you know in different ways and try to force the ball in spots I shouldn't. Um, and you know props to them for for game planning that. What you see on that 38 yard, yard or two with Daniel? Yeah. Uh, we that was a you know a one on one shot we had you know cooked up for a little bit and um, you know Daniel was waiting on the shot and you know he he ran an amazing route um, and you know did a really good job of delaying um, his eyes and his hands to make the DB to, you know, not know where the ball was going to be and um, he made an outstanding play on that and you know that that moved and generated energy for us and uh, moved the ball down the field and um, you know there's some points. PJ mentioned in that fourth quarter when Illinois took the lead that you were on the sidelines kind of rallying the troops what was your message to everybody before that touchdown drive in response? Yeah um, number one thing is just stick to it and keep your head down and keep working we you know one, one of the things that we talk about all year um, is just continue to move. All we, all we can do is continue to move um, and just go 1-0 on every single play. Um, that's where I thought that the balance between you know, Quinn Carroll and I um, really, really took place. I think it was, it was a message that I was you know, conveying to the offense uh, and that you know, spread throughout the team. And that just doesn't happen because I can say it and someone just listens to it and it spreads out. Um, the leaders on the offense have to actually you know, echo that message as well. Um, and guys like Quinn Carroll did that, and um, it takes it takes a village, and it's not just one guy. And that's what you know today displayed was you know everyone doing their job. What did you think of Darius? Like he was yeah, a lot there he did. Yeah, and we knew we had to to, to get on the ground to, to win the, the game today. And um, the O line you know took a lot of pride in that, and they they blocked their butts off for him. Um, and Darius getting some hard fought yards where he's getting contact at the line of scrimmage is is what you need in running back. And um, you know that that was outstanding. It moved the chains for us when it needed to. And also, like in the past game today, too, he had two outstanding catches that were number one on third down, and also two third down catches that were uh, that moved the sticks for us. That you know that shows what he can do in the past game. Uh, but when his number's called, uh, when we're asking him to do something different, then he'll do it.
Yeah. Uh, what was your thoughts when he, when, he had, when he got that play in? Yeah, um, Coach Harbo, you know, dialed up a really good play there. Um, you know, we got we got down tight and we were. Um, it was just a matter of, of executing the small details. It was. Uh, it's a one hitter. If you have it, if you have it, if you don't, then you got to figure something out. And um, Jamo got to a really good spot, um, sold it really well, um, and got to you know the edge where I could complete an easy pass to him. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, I think that um, at that point it just becomes minor over matter. Um, it's, it's a physical game. I mean, it's what we do. I mean, we keep rolling. I mean, just it's just mind over matter. Like at that point, it's just mentally staying there and just focusing on what you had to do and forget about anything else. You had another nine receptions today, forty-three now this season. Has kind of the ability that you're displaying in the receiving thing, receiving game been everything you thought it was going to be with Max coming into the year? Um, yes, I mean, when I first met him, he talked about how he threw the check down to his former um, running back. Um, I, I mean, I told him that I'm excited for that. Um, and he knew, like, he goes through his progression and he's going to check it down. So, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i just doing my job in protection and then getting out when I can. Um, and then, I mean, it's my job to make the play once he throws me the ball. What did you take away from leadership going into that the last drive when you guys were down one and you're in the fourth quarter? What Max was doing? Um, I think that Max does a great job of just keeping everybody even grounded, um, keeping everything flowing. Um, also, Quinn Carroll, I mean, the whole line was, was talking to me the whole time and, and keeping things going, just keeping a smooth head and just and just staying poised. That was the biggest thing, and that's a lot of things that we talked about, was just staying poised and just uh, executing on a high level like we can. You said we heard uh, Max talk about it. What was what Quinn doing that was so unique? I mean, he was just... He was just constantly talking, constantly motivating guys, constantly um, picking guys up when maybe a play didn't go right, maybe a guy on the O-line um, made a mistake. I mean, he was just keeping guys' heads up. I mean, um, even when I would make a mistake, he'd keep my head up. So, I mean, he just did a great job of just being a supportive role and just and just leading overall. It's another day where the offense didn't turn over the football. What do you think has been so key in you guys hanging on to the ball? Is it the ball of the program everywhere? Or? I mean, yes, that's just a part of our culture. I mean, number one thing in our program is the ball. I mean, like you know we say, the ball is a program, um, and everybody on the team truly believes that. So, I mean, that's the main focus. Whenever you have the ball in your hand, I mean, you have the entire program in your hand. Um, so, I mean, the game is not football without the ball. So, I mean, the ball is the most important thing. So, I mean, it's just something that we take pride in, keep taking care of the ball, and just the ball is a program. Do one or two more for Darius, if they're all right? All right, Darius, thank you. Thank you, guys. Shot comes in the game, I think the first play of that drive, and then you're able to fall on the ball. What was your perspective from the, just the game winning throw? Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> got into my rush, didn't win initially, and you know, you always have a progression. You know, don't one work do, or one move doesn't work, you hit the next one, and you know, in the process of working my pass rush, I see the ball dribbling on the ground, and uh, at that point, it's just we work. I know Darius just hitting at the balls everywhere. We work uh, fumble recovery, force and fumbles every day after practice, and it just kind of instant kicked in, uh, catch, tip, tuck, squeeze. So. What was your reaction to the fake punt? Uh, I mean, I didn't know we were calling a fake punt. I'm not on punt, so I didn't know we were calling a fake punt, but um, I have all the, all the motivation and the, all the belief in our punt team that, you know, I trust whatever calls made, and, you know, defense went out there and, um, <clears throat> Go play the next play. You know it shouldn't matter. That's that's another thing. You know, don't let the circumstance dictate your behavior. Go back out. It's new drive. And I know the second half, I kept saying to the the defense, you know, this this drive most important drive. Um, and next drive will come up. This is the most important drive of the game right here. Uh, just that next play, next drive mentality. What was the thought process on that force fumble with you and Wally there? Yeah, uh, he had uh, already out leveraged me, and I saw Wally coming out. Um, kind of thinking vice tackle he cuts back and we both hit it on our near shoulder and uh, I saw Wally stand him up and uh, that's just second man strip for us so you know I felt as he was going down his arm was kind of out and just started punching um, trying to you know flail an arm get something and knock the ball loose and it, it happened to come loose. Uh, about the, the yeah and that's that I think that's one of the one of those moments that will stick with me for a really long time is that Michigan locker room. Um, the way we went in to halftime of that game and the way we came out of the end of that game, 
um, it was it was a, a, a line in the sand, a flip switch, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it it sticks with us because we I think it was a kind of a something in our head clicked that you know we are exactly who we think we are, and you know within our four walls we know who we are, uh, and I think that was the turning point with that. And so <clears throat> when games come up, we we use our past to create our future, and um, we've had a lot of ups and downs this season and typically that you don't see in a lot of you know you don't see all that in one season um, and we've I'm, I'm honestly grateful for it to be able to have you know those close losses you know have not so close losses have so many things to learn from that are helping us right now um, this you know late in the season last one for Danny before bring up Anthony you played a lot of football here why was it so memorable I think it was seeing Everyone in the locker room, we're still referencing Michigan locker room. I think it was seeing how close we can be, how how gritty we played in that second half, and you know, just falling short. And coming into that locker room and seeing how everyone responded to that. And, you know, like I said, it just it just like swells up in you and and it, I, I honestly can't even put words to it, but, but it's just you kind of had to be in there to feel, you know, how this team came together after that game. Um, and, you know, we're not perfect. You know, you'll see every Saturday or, you know, if we see you on Wednesdays, you know, we're not perfect. But if you can chase perfection, you may reach excellence. So um, I think that's, that's what kind of clicked in that, that locker room after that game. All right. Thank you, James. Thank you, guys. Race than the quarterback today. What you got? Uh, yeah, I mean, as as every single week goes on, you're telling us to be violent and affect the quarterback. That's the main goal of the D line. The main goal of the defense is to affect the quarterback. I mean, sacks come in bunches, also. So it was just really exciting for all of us to go out there and go attack the quarterback. Like Joe was a little hobbled today. Did you have to feel like you had to put a little bit more on your shoulders, especially in that second half? I don't think I had to put a lot on my second on my shoulders. I mean, I know everybody has my back. Same way I got Josh's back, and same way Dev got mine. And that, if this goes on with, with the D line, so like, there was no pressure going into the game that like I like felt that I had. And um, as you saw, Josh got no hobble. He he did his thing at the end. So heck yeah. I hear you got you call Coy Parrish a certain nickname. Yes. He he does come up he does come up big for us at the end of the game so that's what do you call him? Um, I call him safety um, safety Jesus. He's um. What's I mean, the origin behind that? Um, as you know, Minnesota has great safeties. I mean, you have Tyler Newbin, Antoine Winfield, Kerry Brown, also Coleman Bryce and Aiden Gooseby. Then you also got Coy Parrish in the back, and so that's that's all where it stems from. Because again, we've been a great school for safety, so that's where it comes from. What do you think of Kerry Brown's score today, especially that next last He's a dude. I mean, he it shows in practice. I mean, all the way through fall camp to now, the, his, his dedication to the game, the, it shows in the game. So I, I'm not surprised when he's doing good because that's what he's always done. And, yeah. Um, my reaction, um, I was super confident in him. You know, I didn't know that they were going to go for it, but I have all the belief in Crawford to make that play. And, you know, some things just don't go our way sometimes. And, again, I have all the belief if we were to do it again that Crawford's going to get it. What confidence from Max Rosner uh, goes over to your, your side of the ball, too? Uh, I mean, with the whole entire offense, I mean, when they, when we're all going, we're all firing all cylinders, we're all, everybody's going. It's just complimentary football. And, it definitely shows today when we all play together, when the offense, special teams, and defense play together, it's, it's something special. And you know, it's really hard to stop us. Uh, what did you feel like your teammates did when, when uh, Drew Gahan was struggling at the end of the year? Last one, pick him up. Go ahead, Anthony. On the, we always knew. Cra Dragon's great. I mean, I, I, I always tell him, like, I would rather have no, no, I wouldn't have any other kicker besides Dragon. I mean, he. He's the best. He, in my eyes, like I've seen him as a freshman the whole way till now, and I haven't seen any other kicker that's like him. So, I I have all the belief in Dragon all the time, 100. percent I was never worried. I was never worried, and I don't think anybody on the team was ever worried that Dragon was going to miss another one. All right, thank you, thank you guys. Appreciate it.